And I just want to say publicly how much I appreciate his friendship and his support. He has been there for me for 12 years now as an elected official, doing all he can to help me. He's there with good advice. He is, tries to help in every way possible. Uh, and we are very, very fortunate to have one of the most effective United States Senators as our Senator, Tom Harkin. And speaking of, Roxanne Conlin will be the next United States Senator from Iowa. And you think it's been a long 30 years for you. <laughs> it's been a long 30 years for the Culver family too. We will replace Chuck Grassley with Roxanne Conlin on November 2nd. Now, if you need a little motivation over the next 140 days, just keep one fact in mind. It's been 164 years in our state, 164 years, and we've never elected a woman to Congress. There's only two states with that distinction, Mississippi and Iowa. That will change. That will change on November 2nd if we do all we can over the next 140 days. If we work hard on the ground, picking up those ballots, organizing our precincts. And I want to be a part of history on November 2nd when Roxanne Conlon wins this race. And I know you want to be a part of it too. And we need to send another progressive like Tom Harkin to Washington and Roxanne will be that senator. <clears throat> I also want to welcome uh, everyone to the ticket. We have a fantastic ticket from top to bottom. I know that John Murphy is going to make a great auditor. He is going to give David Vaught the fight of his life, and I can't wait to serve with John Murphy as our new auditor. Mike Morrow, Mike Fitzgerald, and Tom Miller. And Francis Thickey, we can't wait to have a clean sweep when it comes to the Executive Council when we elect all four of them on November 2nd as well. And I want to take a moment to tell you how much I've enjoyed the privilege of working closely with not only Tom Harkin on things like flood recovery and fighting to expand the biofuels industry in our state, but Bruce Braley, Leonard Boswell, and Dave Lobsack have been there with me every step of the way in terms of fighting for $4 billion for flood recovery for our state. They have worked as hard as they possibly can to bring their districts back, to bring their communities back from the floods and tornadoes of 2008. And I have enjoyed working with them and their staffs. We are so fortunate to have individuals like Bruce and Dave and Leonard representing us in Washington and the United States Congress. Thank you and th for helping to elect them again on November 2nd as well. Now, we have got to set the record straight between now and November 2nd in terms of what our party stands for, what the Culver Judge Administration stands for, and what Terry Branstead stands for. I want to continue to build on our strengths in education, in agriculture, in manufacturing, in renewable energy to create jobs all over Iowa. In my second term, I want Iowa to become the best connected state in America. That's why we're focusing on unprecedented investment in our infrastructure. That's why we've invested $600 million to date in the Iowa Jobs and Infrastructure Initiative. That's why we have secured $4 billion for thousands and thousands of flood recovery projects so that we can rebuild from those floods stronger and more sustainable and better than we were before the floods. We're going to rebuild that campus at the University of Iowa. We're going to make it more sustainable. 
We're going to make it greener. We're going to make it more efficient in, those ter in terms of those new buildings. We're going to put people to work. At the same time, short-term job creation related to these infrastructure projects. When we rebuild Hancher Auditorium, for example, when we rebuild the fire station in Al-Qaeda in Charles City and the new library in Cedar Rapids and the new Paramount Theater in Cedar Rapids, when we help smaller communities like Oakville and Palo come back, we will be putting people to work. That's why the U.S. Chamber of Commerce two weeks ago said that Iowa has the eighth fastest growing economy in America today. We are moving forward. We are outpacing almost every state in terms of economic growth. And it didn't happen by accident. Forbes magazine said that Iowa is the fourth best place in America to do business and that Des Moines, Iowa is the best place in America to find a job and start a career. We are on the right track. We are moving forward and we don't want to go backward with Branstead. And speaking of, the former four-term governor says that change is on the way. He's got that right. Change is on the way. If you believe in women's rights, Terry Branstad wants to take away those rights. He does not want to allow women in this state to make their own health care decisions. That's the kind of change that Terry Branstad will bring. When it comes to civil rights, change is on the way. He's going to take away Iowans' rights and Iowa's freedoms when it comes to equality. That's the kind of change that Terry Branstead represents. Our Supreme Court has spoken loudly and clearly, and we're not going backwards on civil rights in this state. We are going forward into the 21st century, not backwards to the 1980s. On women's rights, on civil rights, on workers' rights, on human rights. Those are our values. And we're not going backward. Not on my watch. Not on your watch. Not in 2010. It is a different generation, a different century, and we're moving this state forward. Yes, we will, and yes, we are going to beat Terry Branstead because our values are Iowa's values. And there is too much at stake on November 2nd. We need to fight, we need to work, and we are going to win together on November 2nd. Thank you all very much. Let's work hard and let's win, and let's keep moving Iowa forward. We're not going backwards. Thank you very much.